How's it going guys? In today's video we have to talk about the calibration that we did yesterday. So the green tint remover. We did indeed remove the green tint however the screen became magenta blue and I have talked before about making an iPhone calibration. Not using the iPhone to calibrate the TV but looking at the phone and then looking at the TV and doing this for hours on end. Well we are now closer than ever to making this 100% exactly as, as, at least as my iPhone 16 Pro Max is to make the TV look the same. Now, I will be using every single reference point from this, so I was in remote play on the phone. And this is gonna sound crazy. I start the streaming app remote play on the phone so that I get a streaming of what's happening, but then it's not the signal from the TV anymore, so I'm getting the raw information from the PS5 on the phone with the calibration on the phone using true tone on the iPhone so that it's D65 certified and then I'm checking on the TV. Now, there's one huge ass issue with this TV. So, it's green when you do 150. We have to fix that issue. We have fixed that issue. It's done. However, there has been a thing that has been nudging me like crazy. The mid-tones in the fog are always slightly too high in gamma, like, um, shit, not gamma. Uh, what is this called, man? The gamma just looks kind of washed out, doesn't look as clear as it needs to. It looks too, too bright, it needs to look a little darker, and it doesn't, it doesn't look right. It's not supposed to be this blue. Yes, this game has a bluish tint to it, uh, Resident Evil Village. But it isn't supposed to look that blue in the fog here. And in the fog right here, we have a lot of issues that are... I'm just gonna say it, they are really bad. Like, it's not supposed to look like that at all. So, I fixed it. But there is one cutback, one drawback that is... Maybe you won't like so much. Now, I've checked through... I think it's like 50 different games now, checking colors and everything, and everything looks good. Except for one thing. Okay. You see, this is a screenshot. We've zoomed in on the UI from the PS5 here. We are in the gallery, and then I saw this streaking thing here, and we got weird color banding issues here that we didn't have before looking like they do now. We don't have more color banding, no, we have the exact same color banding, but we have more colors now, deviating in a weird pattern here, so we have brown here instead of gray. Now, I've tried to calibrate away the brown, but when I do that, the blue issue comes back in, that issue that I was talking about from the fog here. So, well, I will have to show you. So, the, this is right now filmmaker mode. And the settings we did yesterday, the green tint removal, looks like this. It looks very purple almost actually, but it is magenta. So we don't have any more green, that's great, but now we have another issue. So how do we ultra balance everything, get out the browns from this uh, muddy ground here, we get out more of the white, we get more of the color that is actually supposed to be here and there, and we correct this to be more gray. Okay. Boom. That's how we do it, man. Everything is now calibrated, and it actually looks very close to the phone now. I don't see any issues whatsoever. The issue is, as I said before, this is now brown and this is not as white. What does this tell us? Well, the peak luminance is now slightly lower than default and some grey tones near black are now brown. This TV was never really great at showing near black grey. It always showed it in blue. Now it's brown instead. You can calibrate this to make it less brown However, I've tried for hours now, and really, I just make the freaking fog too blue. Then reference, it's not supposed to be that blue, it's supposed to look like it looks right now. Now, one thing that is plainly obvious to me after doing this calibration is, the blue here in the mid-tones is also gone. So now we have actually a clarity aspect with the colors that are underneath 
even more than before. We got the mud here now looking actual brown. We got the colors of red and orange and yellow here from these torches actually popping and giving off the correct tono shift now of the correct colors. So it actually looks very cohesive. We also have green on this bush here that I can tell you right now if you go into the original settings for a second just to showcase the entire thing. Everything is now green. So obviously these bushes won't look green speckly anymore. They now look cyan green like the entire screen. These elements and these elements all have some green in them. And this looks blue and green. So there are like huge issues with these panels honestly. When you use warm 50, specifically warm 50. If you use white balance zero or cold 50 if you're a crazy person, you don't get this issue. You get slight green tint and it's way too blue. So it's not gonna be accurate in the sense of being D65 white point close anymore. It still won't be accurate either way, so it doesn't really matter, but it will be closer to the D65 either way if you use 150. That's what I'm trying to say. So when we did the calibration yesterday, we got more of the detail from that bush doing this calibration, but it's way too magenta. And I'm not happy with that. I want it to look like this. I want it to be cohesive. I want it to be great. And it's just that one issue, man. When we go into the PlayStation 5, we can't see it here right now. Not too much anyways. But this looks a little bit more brown than when before it was more purple blue-ish dark. Now it's dark brown. Here, it's dark brown. Before, it looked like this. Wait. I know I can use the shortcut, but I forgot about it in a moment. Okay, filmmaking mode. So now it looks more gray, green, blue. And the settings that we did yesterday, the green tint remover. Now it looks kind of the same, but the text becomes too uh, cold. And it looks more magenta, even here. And this makes it brown. So, everything is correct, except for that near black. The thing is, we could calibrate it, and I will try to make it better, but I won't be doing that in this video. So this is like a green tint remover version 2 calibration. Uh, I will make a follow-up video even to this one uh, to correct the brown, but it will take hours to do that without uh, calibration gear. I have to look at the screen, take a break, go away so that my eyes can recalibrate again. It's a whole process. It's going to take a long-ass time because I don't want to give away a calibration that isn't 100% as good as I can make it. I've done that several times before, yes, but I have higher standards now than before. So, um, checking out this photo right here. I've showed you this photo before, I've always used this as a reference, because it's good, because in this game, when you're in HDR, this is Modern Warfare 2 Remaster, the campaign, it's one of the first missions in the game, they are pushing way, much, way too much of a cold tinge in this game. So, if you're doing the 65 white point calibration, this game should have the snow being white but slightly blue. It is now white but slightly blue, but it's because we have done this D65 white point calibration correction. If we used the settings from yesterday, it would have looked cold and magenta. And if we used the original settings of Warm 50, uh, with not doing any of the green tint removal, it looks green on the entire screen. So. We needed to separate the black from his vest here, make the green browns from his uh, outfit here come out, and the shadows needs to look less blue, green, and more dark gray. So, the setting from yesterday made it look like this, and we do indeed have more separation now in the outfit here, but it's not as good as this. This looks very cohesive for not being a professionally calibrated way using tools. That methodology would be a lot harder also to copy for, from panel to panel. All LG OLEDs are very close with their calibrations from factory. So you can copy all of the settings, but just know your TV might be leaning slightly more in green and slightly more in magenta than my TV is. So it might not be 100% one to one when you copy my settings, as always. Um, but it should be pretty close. And this is honestly, if you have issues with your TV, in any way, shape or form. You might not have even noticed this. Try this out 
and you can do this calibration as a base layer and then do calibrations on top of this. So you can have this calibration. You can still follow my videos in the future and make like calibrations like this with the presets for games. This works for all games, all movies, all TV series, all apps on the TV. This is a just fully corrected way of using a TV. It works for Dolby Vision, it works for HDR10, it works for HDR10PQ, it works for SDR, it works for all consoles, it works for everything. This is not just for consoles, it's also for PC, it works for absolutely everything. So, what are the settings? Stop japping, man. Give me the settings. The settings are extremely simple, but it's gonna take time to follow. So, keep that in mind. The first thing you wanna do, you wanna navigate here, you wanna go advanced settings. You wanna turn off reduced blue light, only temporarily though. You wanna go brightness, and this is HDR. You're gonna copy this to all of the subsets of settings on the TV. If it's SDR, do the exact same thing. Just keep in mind, um, you're not gonna be using HDG. If it's SDR, then you're not gonna be using anything at all. Because that doesn't have any tone mapping. And if it's Dolby Vision, you don't have any tone, um, then you don't have any tone mapping either. So. This is specifically for HDR10. Don't care about this feature being missing if you're using Dolby Vision on Xbox or whatnot. Okay, so we're doing 100 brightness because we want to have as much impact as possible. Then we do HDRG, Express and Enhancer off because it does really mess with the artistic intent of the like HDR information coming from the game. It will mess with the mid tones quite a bit, so I wouldn't use that. Um, video range limited as always. Motion eye care on for your eyes, that's really good. Then we do zero tint, auto detect, and we go white balance. Now is where it becomes a little bit hard. Okay, so warm 50, two point method, high point, plus 20, minus 20, plus 40. You can pause the video and go back if it's going too fast. Low point, minus 15, minus 5, minus 40. Now we're gonna go to 22 point method. We're gonna go all the way down. You will have differentiating code values depending on if you're in Sweden or if you're in Switzerland or if you're in another country than me, you might not have the same 101 code value, but just know it will be the exact same. Just go down to the lowest point. Boom, you're done, go there. And then you go down to blue, minus 10. You change code value one click up. You go down and you do minus 22, minus 7, you change up one more, minus 23, minus 7, you go up one more, you do minus 23, minus 7, you go up one more, minus 15, minus 5, you go up one more, and we're done. That's the entire calibration. Now, you have to re-enable re the reduced blue light for your eyes protection and for this calibration to be as close to accurate as it can be. Uh, I have heard from people in the community that aren't using calibration tech that are saying that reduced blue light option can deviate color accuracy slightly from the panel's peak on the color gamut. I haven't seen anyone actually testify and show that that is actually the case. I think it's just rolling off the filter slightly and adding a warmer tinge. So don't worry about color accuracy. Um, either way, all that we have just done is so much more accurate than the default filmmaker mode that it, it puts it to shame. Look, this looks horrible. We have zero, zero, man, independency of the colors and the accuracy of the contrast and the mid-tones, and the LUT looks completely wrong, even though we are still pushing limited. Just imagine if we put something crazy, like, let, let's do this. Let's do the, this is the exact same settings that we've already been doing, but I just changed to Vivid. And let's now change to full instead. Can you see what, hap what, what happens with the, with the LUT and the mid-tones? Look here in the shadows. They're super washed out and then boom, dark, deep. All of the colors look correct and then washed out. We lose a lot of the highlights actually on the snow and like everything just looks weird. So don't use full full or auto auto. Use limited on the TV and auto on the console. That way console knows what it is on the TV and it will counter it and it will make sure that it's correct. 
The TV needs to be unlimited, just as in from the video apps and everything, it has to be limited to be correct. When LG made these TVs, for some reason, the, the limited is like a full, but it isn't full. So it's, it's gonna be confusing for most people, but all TVs originally are always supposed to be limited and then uh, PC monitors are full. So it's a language translation issue here when it comes to uh, PC stuff and like technology stuff in general. It's gonna be confusing. I've tried to explain this several times, but it's never gonna fully come through, I feel. So yeah, those are the settings. As I said, you can calibrate this for every single app, every single console. And now you will have a better calibration than you had yesterday with the green tint remover, because this is even better. And this is, uh, I would say, 99% uh, uh, extremely close to how it looks on the iPhone 16 Pro Max when using True Tone. It's just the uh, 16 Pro Max looks slightly more cold and slightly more magenta. So I've even calibrated the TV slightly better, but it's not 100% to the phone's reference. That's what I'm saying. So it's even better, I would say. Uh, it took me around eight hours to do this calibration. I have spent the entire day doing this. Um, it's super warm today and uh, the, the room isn't cooling off anytime soon. Uh, I have to go and get a drink. It's hot as hell in here, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I will definitely update you guys on the brown issue there with the menus. Uh, but just know for now, that's gonna be a little further down the line. It won't come in the next video. Because uh, I don't actually know really how to fix that. It's gonna take a long ass time and it's gonna be a headache and a half. And I've already spent eight hours trying to help you guys with this today. And I'm not even being paid to do this. So it's like, oof, yeah, man, I gotta get a job. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, it's sweaty in here. I gotta go. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys love this, man, because I really do. It's awesome. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.